This is Math 251, section 14.4. So far in this chapter, we've looked at two different ways of evaluating a line integral. We've seen that we can do it directly by parameterizing our curve, and then either integrating f dot t ds if we want circulation, or f dot n ds if we want flux. The second method we learned was the fundamental theorem of calculus. That was a little bit limited. We could only use it for circulation if we had a conservative vector field, or we could use it for flux if we had a source-free vector field. In this section, we're going to look at a third method for evaluating line integrals. And once again, it's going to come with some limitations, but when those limitations are met, it can provide us with another really nice and sometimes very simple way of evaluating our line integrals. It's called Green's Theorem. And just like before, we're going to see two forms, once for circulation and once for flux. If I've got a vector field F, and this is going to be a two-dimensional vector field, FG, R is a region in two space, bounded by the closed curve C. I should probably specify oriented counterclockwise. Then, the integral over the curve C of f dot t ds, which we know as our circulation integral, is equal to the double integral over r of the partial of g with respect to x minus the partial of f with respect to y, dA. A couple things to look at here. First of all, there's a little bit of notation that I may not have used before. This circle, um, kind of in the middle of the integral sign, specifically indicates that we are looking at a closed curve. That's our big limitation for Green's theorem. It's only usable if the path is a closed curve. And that's a way of emphasizing that we're integrating over a closed curve. Secondly, let's dive into a little bit more what this says. This says that if I do have a closed curve, so let me just sort of draw a generic closed curve here, C, oriented counterclockwise, then the circulation that happens around the edge has something to do with something happening over the entire region R. Our region R is the interior here, what's bounded by C. So, kind of interesting that something that's happening on the boundary can be determined by something that's going on in the interior. Circulation on the boundary. Depends on something in the interior. We're going to give that something a name. This quantity, partial of g with respect to x minus partial of f with respect to y, is called the two-dimensional curl. Curl is a concept we'll actually meet in a more general sense in the next section, but for right now we're just going to go ahead and take the name and say the circulation on the boundary depends on the curl in the interior. All right. For that reason, you will sometimes see Green's theorem written this way. The circulation integral is the double integral of the curl of f, dA. It means exactly the same thing as what we had up here, just sort of a little bit of a shorthand notation. A second note, if that curl, the g sub x minus f sub y is zero, then we have a number of conclusions that we can draw. First of all, if that's equal to zero, then we're integrating zero, so our circulation is going to turn out to be zero. Secondly, since that is the curl, we can say the curl of the vector field is zero. 
And thirdly, if I take this statement and I just move the f sub y over to the other side, g sub x equals f sub y, you may recognize that as the condition for a vector field to be, remember, conservative. Because of some of the connotations of what we've just discussed, we're going to talk a little bit about another vocabulary word that's associated that actually means the same thing as this word conservative. We also sometimes call this irrotational. And those two words really mean the same thing. They indicate a situation where we have a curl of zero, or in other words, the g sub x equals the f sub y. And if you think of it, that word irrotational also carries a lot of meaning. If the circulation is zero, the vector field's not pushing us around this curve at all. It's not helping us rotate around the curve. It's irrotational. So those two words mean the same thing and we'll use them interchangeably. All right, so let's take a look at an example of using Green's theorem. Again, I haven't proven this theorem to you, kind of like the FTC. I never really proved it to you. If you're interested, take a look at the book. But um, I'd like to do at least one problem two different ways just to show that we get the same answer with Green's theorem as we would have done by parameterizing our original method for finding line integrals. So in this next problem, we're going to find the circulation for the vector field f equal to negative 3y comma 3x, where c is this path uh, it's not shown on yours, so if you want to go ahead and sketch that, it's just a triangle with vertices at the origin and then at 1 on both the x and the y axes. We're going to do the problem two ways. Direct evaluation, which I'm using that to represent parameterizing the curve. And then Green's theorem, which is our new method that we've just looked at. So let's start with the parameterization method. It's our familiar one. If I'm going to do this by parameterization, I'm going to have to do three separate line integrals because these three paths have different equations. So let's see, I'll start out with path A, which is my along the y-axis, so x equals 0. And if I were to parameterize that one, x has to be 0, so y could be the t-value. And noticing the direction here, y would start at 0, excuse me, y would start at 1 and end at 0. That means t has to start at 1 and end at 0. So I've seen this once before, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful when I set up my integral. All right, I need r prime, which will be 0, 1. And I need f. This is my x, that's my y. So f is negative 3y, be negative 3t, comma 3x, which will be 0. All right, since I'm going for circulation, that's it. That's all I need. I'll have the integral from 1 to 0 of f dot r prime. dt. And notice here I'm going to get 0 plus 0 when I do that, that product. So I'm just going to get 0 for that piece of the circulation. All right, let's do um, path B. Path B is the x-axis, so that would be y equals 0. So I can parameterize by letting x be t 
and y has to be 0. x is t, and x or t does go from 0 to 1. My r prime, 1, 0. And the f, again, negative 3y comma 3x. I'm now using x and y from the new r. So negative 3y would be 0, and 3x would be 3t. So my circulation, I'm integrating from 0 to 1 f dot r prime and let's see that would be 0 plus 0 again giving me 0 for the circulation on path B as well so far we're not getting too much but let's see what happens with C path C I could consider to be the line y equals a slope of negative 1, so negative 1x plus a y-intercept of 1. And so I can parameterize with x equaling t, and y would be minus t plus 1. I am um, going this way, so the x is actually go backwards from 1 to 0 meaning the t's also have to go again backwards from 1 to 0. Our prime is 1, negative 1. And f, negative 3 times y. I multiply this y, this is x and y. I multiply this y by negative 3. I'll get 3t minus 3. And 3x, just 3t. So my circulation, integral from 1 to 0 of the f dot product with the r prime. Squeeze in my dt there. That's going to give me 3t minus 3 times 1 is still 3t minus 3. And then 3t times negative 1 is a minus 3t. Those will subtract off. So I just really get the integral of negative 3. It gives me negative 3t from 1 to 0. That'll be 0 subtract negative 3, or 3. So when I add these all up, the total circulation, 0 from the first, plus 0 from the second, plus 3 from the third, for a final value of the circulation integral of 3. All right, so that's our traditional original parametric or parameterizing the curve method. Let's see how this same problem would look if I did it with Green's Theorem instead. I'm just going to re-sketch my path down here. All right, so Green's Theorem says that the circulation integral f dot t ds can also be calculated by taking the double integral over r of, and I'm just going to take the, write the shorthand notation, g sub x minus f sub y dA. So this time, instead of thinking about this, the uh, actual boundary, I'm going to think about setting my integral up over the region that's enclosed by that boundary. Let's see, let's go ahead and do the g sub x and the f sub y. I'll just remind us again that f was negative 3y comma 3x. So 
so we have an f and a g. Derivative of g with respect to x would be 3. Subtract the derivative of f with respect to y would be negative 3. So we just have a 6 there as our integrand. And then to set up my limits of integration, um, definitely doesn't look like a polar. I think rectangular is going to be the way to go. So let's just go with dy dx. And I'm going to be thinking about a vertical rectangle here. Let's see, that top line would be y is equal to minus x plus 1. And of course the bottom is just y equals 0. So my y limits of integration go from 0 to minus x plus 1. And then the x limits from 0 to 1. All right, let's see what we get. That's just 6, so when I integrate 6 dy, I'll get 6y. So I'm going to get 6 times the opposite of x plus 1 minus 0 dx. And that's a simple enough integral. You can either do it by hand or the calculator. I did plug this one in already, and I did get 3 again. So we've confirmed what we had up here. And you'll notice that especially in a situation like this where you've got multiple pieces making up one closed curve, ultimately Green's theorem can be a big shortcut because you only had to set up one double integral instead of three separate line integrals like we did up here. All right, we will come back in the next video and do a few more examples.